Good evening. America came under attack today from international terrorists on a scale that made it more an act of war. The center of New York is still smoldering with America's two tallest buildings in ruins. Terrorists also struck with remarkable ease at the heart of America's defense, the Pentagon. Also, in Washington, other government buildings, symbols of American power, were emptied as the terror spread. Air traffic is paralyzed. Coast to coast, all key installations are on high alert. And amid the nightmare, the only estimate of fatalities is that they could run into many thousands. Out of the blue, at a quarter to nine this morning, New York time, a hijacked airliner carrying dozens of passengers flew straight into the World Trade Center's North Tower with devastating effect. Eighteen minutes later, a second attack, another hijacked jet, struck the Trade Center's twin South Tower, exploding in a huge fireball. Next, it was the turn of Washington and the Pentagon, the nerve center of America's military. A third hijacked American airliner, again with dozens of passengers on board, deliberately flown into the side of the building. You all right, Stan? Did you have a nice weekend? I did, Brent. I got my carpet tax organized, finally. Did you? I bet you'd imagine they were standardised, aren't you, carpet tax? Yeah. They're not. I had to laugh in the end. The variations in length. Can you put boiler on for me, Stan? Now, the trays and the docket, they don't exactly tally. Why? What have I not got? You've got your white sliced, you've got your brown, you've got your rolls, you've got your French sticks and you've got your pitters. Yeah. But you haven't got your granary torpedoes. <laughs> Why have I not got my granary torpedoes? We didn't all get put on van. I weren't there. This were Glenda. Oh, just sign it, Bren. I've got an itchy bum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Norman, I can't sign saying I've had granary torpedoes if I haven't had granary torpedoes. That'd be like Bridge Over the River Kwai, that, wouldn't it? Eh? Hey? Well, it'd be like Kim Novak in Vertigo. You know, living a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Have you never seen Vertigo? Seen it? I've got it. <laughs> Alec Guinness. Very erect. In Bridge of the River Pie. And what's that one with Stanley Holloway? Labrador Hill Mop. Oh, and he runs down all the steps of the Eiffel Tower. Oh, I couldn't watch that. Running down steps. Oh, it'd have put me back years, that would. <laughs> I'd have a ventilate. The last time, the last time I came to your, your concert, I'd only recently moved in. I only recently moved into to, to the gar. To the gar, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was go word as well, but it's gar. First morning I was there, some bloke said to me, Good morning, Mr. Davis, welcome to gar. <laughs> I thought I'd moved again. Honest. Because we used to live, we, 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 we used to live in Cardiff, but do we? In Cardiff. Oh, you live in Swansea now, and the accent's different. It changes on about pile, but uh, everything changes a pile, isn't it? And I forgot to tell you the last time it was here about my little boy. My little boy, because when we moved, like my little boy, because when we moved, I brought him with me, no point living him in Cardiff. You know, he's the only little one. He's only about that big, Ben. Me. How old is he now? 32. 32, yeah. Certainly, yeah. My mother had psychic experiences really since she was a child and through her teens and adult life. But she tended to ignore it. She wasn't too interested then. Obviously, she met my dad and, and they had me. So it wasn't till in later years she decided to pursue it and develop it further. Um, really when I was about a preteen, um, I also had psychic experiences as a child and I joined it too and we went every week, a couple of times a week. So by then we were already involved in um, psychic development classes, um, mediumship training, seances, that kind of thing. We were already involved in um, seeking mediums for messages from dead relatives um, and really developing in it. We were interested in astral projection, astrology, meditation, yoga, you know, we were becoming deeply involved. So when the odd frightening thing happened, I guess we thought, well, it's just a hazard of the job. 
you're dealing with spirits, you're bound to get a few negative spirits. We didn't really question. Welcome to Catchphrase. Catch the money, catch the prizes, catch the holidays. I'll never forget the holiday I was on last year. The sun, the sand, the dancing. I was dancing with this very, very young lady and all her friends were all around. They were all clapping and I was kicking it all this year. You know. I said, do your friends think I'm in the groove? And she said, yes, uh, they all think you've got one foot in it. <laughs> At home, have you got a minute? Now, there are some very strange people about. Do you agree, ladies and gentlemen? Like, take my brother, Shiri. He sent away for his family tree, they sent him back a bunch of coconuts. <laughs> he went to have his eyes tested, and the man said, uh, put your right hand over your left eye and read the card. Shiri went... He said, no, put your right hand over your left eye. He went... <laughs> the optician went into the cupboard, he brought out a cornflake packet. He cut two holes in it and put it over his head. He said, now read the card. Shiri started crying. He says, what are you crying for? He said, I wanted a gold rim pair like me brothers. <laughs> <laughs> we got a couple of contestants. Let's say hello to them.